India just shocked the world with what they're building. India is racing toward a future where blackouts and coal smog could be replaced by one of the biggest nuclear projects the world has ever seen. But here's the twist. The Jaitapur nuclear power plant isn't just big. It's designed to be the single largest nuclear station operating anywhere on Earth. Six towering reactors on one stretch of coastline, generating electricity for tens of millions of homes. But with delays, protests, and safety fears circling, can this mega project really light India's future? Or will it collapse under its own weight? You hear the world's largest nuclear power plant and think ambition. But the question is, why does India want it so badly? The answer lies in a collision of growth, pressure, and survival. India's demand for electricity is exploding like almost nowhere else on Earth, and every year that gap between what it needs and what it can actually deliver grows wider. Look at it this way. Factories are spreading across industrial zones faster than power lines can keep up. Cities are pushing outward, swallowing up farmland, and drawing on massive amounts of electricity for construction and new housing blocks. And then there's the digital economy. Every new data center, from banking services to mobile networks and streaming platforms, adds another layer of constant demand. When you put that together, you're looking at an economy that doesn't just want more power. It needs it every single hour of the day. The problem? Coal still dominates India's grid. More than two thirds of the power supply often comes from burning it. Coal is cheap, domestic, and reliable, but it's also choking the very air people breathe. Indian cities regularly rank among the most polluted in the world. Delhi's infamous winter smog isn't just haze, it's coal mixed into the lungs of millions. Add to that global climate negotiations, where India faces intense pressure to cut emissions, and coal goes from being a lifeline to a political trap. You've seen the effects before, rolling blackouts hitting fast-growing cities, sharp rises in electricity bills when supply gets tight, and heavily polluted air driving health crises. Even when wind and solar step in, they don't hold steady when night falls or the wind stops blowing. Hydro can help during the rainy season, but droughts leave dams half empty. And here's the key point. To run a manufacturing powerhouse, you can't run on backups and gaps. You need baseload power that is both constant and clean. That's where nuclear energy steps onto the stage. On paper, it looks like the golden ticket, Huge output, zero carbon emissions at the point of generation, and a reliability that matches what coal has delivered for decades. Unlike solar farms spread across deserts or offshore wind arrays sensitive to seasons, a nuclear station produces the same electricity every hour, day, or night. Now consider the scale we're talking about. Jaitapur's six planned reactors would deliver up to 10 gigawatts of power. For a sense of what that means, Think of a mid-sized country's entire grid being equivalent to a single stretch of coastline in Western India. That's not a supplement to the system. It's a power source big enough to reshape the national balance. But nuclear is never just about numbers. It has a shadow. Mention the word nuclear and you'll trigger reassurance for some and fears for others. Supporters describe reactors as statistically safe with layers of technology designed to contain every risk. Critics remind the world of what happens when things go wrong. Chernobyl, Fukushima, and the decades-long scars they left. In India, that perception battle is as critical as the engineering itself, because nuclear isn't just a science project. It's a public promise. So why go all in, and why now? Because without a giant nuclear leap, India faces a brutal choice. Cling to coal and watch its climate goals collapse, or gamble on renewable storage technologies that still aren't ready at the scale needed. Nuclear offers a middle path, and Jaitapur is the crown jewel of that bet. Six advanced European-designed reactors planted on the Arabian Sea coast. But if scaling up nuclear energy sounds like a perfect answer, the reality is far heavier. Jaitapur isn't just India's dream project. It's where optimism collides with local resistance, seismic fault lines, and a debate that refuses to die. And that's exactly where we go next. Straight into the challenges of building the world's largest nuclear power plant, on one of the most complex stretches of land and sea. Why choose a coastline marked by seismic tremors to hold the largest nuclear power plant on the planet? On paper, Jaitapur's location looks brilliant. The Arabian Sea sits right at its edge, offering an endless supply of water to cool the reactors. Ships carrying heavy reactor parts can dock fairly close, cutting down transportation hurdles. But beneath that same soil are fault lines that have registered quakes before. 
So what starts as a dream site for engineering also comes with a risk profile no one can ignore. That paradox drives the entire debate. For nuclear plants, water access isn't optional. It's the backbone of operations. Reactors release enormous heat, and without constant cooling, safety margins shrink. Being next to the sea gives Jadapur an advantage inland facilities can't touch. Yet, coastlines exposed to seismic activity and the threat of tsunamis cast a long shadow. Constructing six reactors side by side magnifies that tension. If one faces failure, the entire site becomes vulnerable, not just technically, but politically. Think about scale here. Each of those six reactors alone is larger than most plants anywhere else. Stack them together, and you don't just build volume, you concentrate risk. An outage or accident wouldn't be limited to one district. It could ripple across the grid, shaking confidence nationwide. That's the kind of pressure engineers at Jadapur face. They aren't building a single machine. They're building a cluster sized to feed entire states. Now, move closer to the human side. For the people living in villages around the site, the fears are sharper. This isn't abstract policy or future targets. It's the land under their feet, their fields, and their fishing grounds. Fisherfolk worry cooling water discharge will impact marine life they depend on. Farmers see their homes and plots swallowed by project zones. And in every conversation, Fukushima hangs in the background. The memory of a nuclear plant struck by natural disaster creates images these communities cannot dismiss. That resistance is not some fringe protest. In past Indian megaprojects, whether dams or highways, community opposition has led to years of stoppage and court battles. In Jaitapur's case, locals have voiced concerns for more than a decade. Protests slowed progress, and environmental cases forced reconsiderations, proving this isn't if opposition happens. It already has, and it already left delays. Layered on top is the global partner, EDF, from France. Bringing its EPR reactor design, these European pressurized reactors are promoted as next generation, fitted with advanced safety systems meant to withstand extreme events. But critics point to their stumbling track record abroad, delayed schedules, mounting costs, and technical challenges in other countries. To them, shifting that same model into India multiplies the uncertainty. So the argument is split, technology that claims to be safer set against evidence of it being slower and more expensive elsewhere. The construction risks go beyond pouring concrete. Imagine synchronizing six cutting-edge reactors built simultaneously while linking up thousands of Indian suppliers providing steel, electronics, coolant systems, and more. Every step must line up with international safety standards. Missing those standards risks global scrutiny. Meeting them requires cost and coordination on a scale India has rarely tested in nuclear projects. Here's the point. The Arabian Sea delivers water and transport access, gifts a nuclear plant depends on. But its shifting geology and restless neighbor communities turn those gifts into constant challenges. Jaidapur is both an engineer's marvel and a policymaker's gamble. If all falls into place, it redefines India's energy map. If cracks appear, whether geological, technical, or social, the entire vision risks collapse. The stakes couldn't be clearer. Success would put India on the map as a true heavyweight in clean power. Failure could set back nuclear credibility, letting coal dominate for another decade. Which way it goes is the question now, hanging over not just Jaidapur, but every nuclear ambition India plans to pursue. Jaidapur isn't just another power plant. It's a high-stakes test of whether nuclear power can truly anchor India's energy future without falling into the traps that have slowed projects before. The scale is almost unimaginable. If it switches on as planned, India proves that mega-nuclear can succeed in a fast-growing economy where others hesitate. But here's the flip side. If delays grind it down or safety issues flare up, coal wins another decade by default. That's why the world is watching this stretch of coastline so closely.